Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Game. I am Conquering History because I'm trying to get used to saying I am Conquering History Games. Uh, and we're actually going to go through workers throughout the ages. The past is the common history of all Olenians. We must embrace our traditions and our culture and merge it with the communist ideals. By remembering the past, we will never again repeat it. So uh, we're just going on five speed, full blown five speed here. Because uh, we've just settled into a really good position. Uh, it's not actually a sustainable one right now because, again, we only have one military factory, so the only thing we are making right now is infantry equipment. Uh, so I'm, I'm losing out on the all important support equipment. But uh, let's move this up because we don't we don't need that one infrastructure I was building. Uh, this is this is going to be done in wait hold on a second. stand. Okay, so, yeah, because I, I noticed I was at 100 command power, so, uh, anyway. So, this is going to be done in March. Every couple of months, it looks like we'll have a new factory. So, I think we can hold out the way we are for at least those next couple of months. Uh, some construction is going to come really handy now, though, unless I want to spend it here instead. Yeah, let's actually spend that on the dispersed industry first. Uh, that, that research bonus, I meant. Soon enough, uh, yeah, I think or, uh, sooner than you think, we are going to have some people on their way to being veterans. And, uh... That she's still moving up in the world. I don't think... I don't think she's anywhere close to being an engineer right now. She is working on Ranger. Which is fun. She's going to be great. <laughs> Alright, that research slot, though, is done. Again, we're not doing any naval stuff. I don't think we need any of these things, like magical means of production. But... Bomb on our... Yeah, some of this stuff is alright, but it's not, it's not spectacular. Definitely not needed. So, let's improve our mountain artillery, which I know is only this one tile right here, but... Every little bit helps. There are... And, and, it, and the point we're going to eventually reach where you just know we're, we're going to win at one point is when I can actually start to build new divisions. I kind of wish that I could get more in there with her. Actually, I probably could. Check this out. We're going to build six of these divisions as quickly as possible just for the sole purpose of um, having her be a skilled staffer. Although we'll probably assign them to the rear for now. Um, okay. Next up, we do have some good bonuses over here. We if we go the superior firepower route, and we do kind of eventually go get that extra research slot. So let's start heading that way. Uh, we're already improving the workers' conditions. Good. Good. Oh, didn't notice that this guy wasn't have anything. Come on now. Let's improve him even though it takes command points to do it. No need to ever be sitting at 100. Let's see, they've almost doubled their casualties since we last checked. They'll do this all day and they will not attack Equestria. Yeah, you know, I haven't made that abundantly clear. They will not attack Equestria at any point. Uh, if they're on historical AI. Unless we've been taken out first. Okay, real quick. Um, let's see. Got infantry weapons over here. But yeah, let's, let's keep coming down here. Bring out the big guns so this is just a wasted uh, focus here for 56 days. Oops, keep, keep letting that get to 100 on me. Got to quit doing that. Excellent. Prepared defense. You see you see how all of it adds up? You see so more defense, more organization. Now we have the Grand Assault. This is going to give us more breakthrough and soft attack, which admittedly is not super important, but the attack does make everything go a little faster, you know, inflicting more casualties on them. Okay, yeah, we're going to have the two deer military technology. Oh, wait, no, technically these were the military technologies. Ah, oh, so I did screw up uh, juggling it all correctly. But that's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But we need infantry equipment, I think. Hmm. Uh, war industrialist first. 
it's going to be more important. We need to be building support equipment. Like, we technically already are, but you know what I mean. I'm here, get the anti-tank, and then we need artillery already queued up. Who'd have thought four military factories would all you needed to look would be all you needed to look forward to? What a crazy world, huh? We only have one factory being consumed by consumer goods factory consumer goods at the moment. I can do this all day. <laughs> it's kind of relaxing. Ten to one ratio now. My navy is holding on just enough. Changelings don't typically get too big a navy. They don't really try at all with it. Running short on, let's see, we don't need that much steel. Just need a bit of aluminum for the um, for the support equipment, which is very important, obviously. Okay, electronics, right? Yeah, support equipment can wait a minute because I'm gonna get this better entrenchment. And although I do wonder, do I want to grab maintenance company for the equipment capture ratio? I think I do. Yo, know, again, you know, grab their guns and use them. Wait, does that work if I'm on defense though? Shit, I. Alright, but these ones are all here, and so now, see, note how we are not putting them on the front lines, but she should start to become a skilled staffer now. Or do they all have to, all 24 divisions have to be in combat at once? I'm trying to remember the actual specifics of it. Come on, damn it. Build Staffer. Likely to gain logistics skill on level up. Yeah, experience gain. See, there it is, controlling at least 24 army. So, now we've got that going. Things get better. And eventually we will convert the six that are down here into uh, to the regular divisions like everybody else, but... Only once we're actually building in. And these, and again, let's look at the, look at the, look at what these look like. Uh, you know, let's try to change this up. Actually. Let's give them, uh, what do, what do we want to be? Yeah, this, yeah, these are just, this is death. This is death for everybody who approaches them. Change these over. Um, that's fine. There's more lend lease coming in. And keep in mind, this is a worse position than I thought I was going to be in. Well, I guess you could say it's better or worse, because like, I was going to do this front line here, but hopefully you all are enjoying this. Maybe I should just kick this over to a live stream, just go live right now. <laughs> right now. And uh, so then I could talk with the chat or something. But. It's all about the patience. You know what? Here, I'll, I'll find something to entertain us. Let me read something uh, kind of cool. I got some articles here. Um, yeah, let's read an article on uh, Roman architecture together. That'll be fun. Uh, wait a second. Encryption, decryption goes up. Research bonuses for what I just said. But when this is done in seven days, we're going to come over here, we're going to grab the improved computing machine, and then after that we'll get the advanced computing, and then we'll be using inscription and bonuses later. That way I get the maximum output. So let's wait on the percal code. Instead, come over here to organic support. Look at that, we've already got some seasoned mountaineers. Very cool. Seasoned Stark Hoover divisions. I just wish they had unique names. I guess they haven't put that in though. I understand that's not exactly high priority, I'm sure. Um, coming up, coming back over here to our resources, I wonder if it's going to be worth it to all to uh, do some excavation. I'm really only I'm trading for the steel anyway, so not a priority actually. Uh, let's get better entrenchment though. Keep cranking that up. All right, so to start killing some time, I'm going to read. Um, this is a cool article. This is called Time. History and Ritual on the Ara Pasius Augustea, which is, uh, I suppose I should actually pull up what exactly that is. Um, looking to do a roast egg plant recipe, you guys all just saw that.
This is just classic, classic um, Roman propaganda. This piece that I'm going to show you guys. I'm find some. It's it's the which it translates incidentally to the uh, the altar of peace. This was it's a it's a it's a monument that was well it's an altar like I said it's an altar that was made by uh, Augustus Caesar. Oh, you, know, you know that one, first emperor of Rome. Um, after he came back from some uh, from some military campaigns. Spain and Gaul. Okay, let's try to find some pictures. So, like, here's the here's a frontal view, sort of, of it. And, uh, here's the south view of it. But, like, it's gonna go into a lot of detail. I'll, like, try to pull up more specific pictures when, uh, when I get to it. Okay, here we go. Just good old Google images. Oh, yeah, there looks like there's some good panel pictures here to work off of. Time for a little last stand, though. Griffonian Empire. See, the Griffonian Empire is barely starting to expand. All right, do I want to keep doing some land doctrine stuff, or can that wait? Probably can just wait. Let's instead, um, really should have gone integrated support, but entrenchment, entrenchment is too good. Let's do this. All right, so <clears throat> this is a time history of ritual on the Ari Ara Pacius or Pacius Auguste. Sorry for all Latin pronunciations in advance. And I really am not needing this desperate defense. I don't know why I even bother continuing to try to save up for it. Entry equipment. So, studies of the Ara Paseus and other uh, Ara Pacius and other similar Roman uh, public Roman monuments traditionally address the potent political symbolism of their decorative programs and emphasize dynastic and other imperial policies. It is suggested here that the altar's imagery of the Golden Age, usually discussed as mere poetic illusion, actually appealed to a significant component of the Roman populace. The program of the Ara Pacius addressed this group's very real fears of cyclical history and promised that the rule of Augustus would avert the cataclysmic destruction of the world predicted by contemporary models of historical thought. Sec, uh... Let's improve equipment time. Yeah, why not? So, now the article actually begins. Well, after I get a research uh, going. And wait a minute before I forget. Maintenance company in there. And uh, so we will try to keep an eye on, as time passes, the capture equipment. Like, for example, if we come over here, these guys just had a fight. We go over here now. Yep, right away they already are capturing equipment. So, so I know there was only one combat, so they got one rifle. Uh, but now we know that uh, even on defense we can capture it. That is good to know. Get the construction up and max planning. We'll save the max planning for when we're going to go on the offensive. Besides that, I think infiltration might be the one I want. On the other hand, Assault lets us stack more planning bonuses later. Hmm. You know what, let's get this first, actually. I'm about to get that infantry improvements. Uh, so right now, the thing we're having the biggest trouble with is with our support equipment. Short on steel. Too much a problem. Let's just try to get more support equipment. Plain and simple. Okay, so so now we're seriously getting into the article. <clears throat> Ancient well, hold on, let's get the clock up so I know how much time. Oh, we're not even halfway through this episode. So Ancient Romans were obsessed with history. Fearful of the potential Did I say this is by Peter Holiday? It's by Peter Holiday. Um Ancient Romans were obsessed with history. Fearful of the potential chaos affected by the random acts of men. The Romans sought to make all events fit into a comprehensible cosmic pattern of history. An analysis, the analysis of significant events and their identification with a, in a restricted repertoire of typologies, therefore, um, became a fundamental intellectual task during the tumultuous Republican period, a task that neatly accounted for troubling phenomenon. Uh, I'm not going to read all the footnotes, by the way, but, like, believe me, this is all 
this is all meticulously cited. I'm talking about every footnote. Like, almost every sentence has a footnote. And every footnote is not only citing it, but is then also giving an explanatory, like, couple of sentences. So, for example, just right here, when he's talking, just that sentence, um, the analysis of significant events and their identification within a restricted repertoire of typologies therefore became a fundamental Ill intellectual task during the tumultuous Republican period, a task that neatly accounted for troubling phenomenon. There's a footnote, and then it goes, the historical right, that footnote then says, the historical writings of Q. Fabius Pictor, 225 BC, and M. Porcius Cato, 235 to 149 BC, um, justified Rome's place in the world during a period of ter territorial expansion against the background of long civil wars. C. Saltulius Crispius, 86 to 34 BC, and M. Tullius Cicero, 106 to 43 BC, explored the moral challenges facing Romans racked by violent political and social upheaval, reflecting the anxiety and turbulence of the late Republic significantly in the works of T. Livis, 59 BC to 17 AD, began writing history after the Battle of Acet uh, Actium. The cynicism and despair of the previous generation gave way to a new sense of security. Quote, Augustus Caesar brought peace by land and sea to the world, 1.19.3. So that was one foot, that's just one example of a footnote and the citations that are going on in this. So I'm not going to read them all because we'll be here all day. Um, okay, how about we try to get out of the first paragraph though, yeah? No, <laughs> research slot available. Uh, we're going to go, yeah, let's go more maintenance companies, uh, better maintenance companies. And uh, time for some, oh, let me do one time. Much longer on this, uh. Oh, I forgot to start doing the uh, computer technology stuff. It's fine. Could work on the Navy a little bit. That's probably done. Great Coastal Railroad. A lot of this stuff doesn't even do anything right now. Communal mines. Yeah, I, really not much else to do. It's there. Screw it. Let's do mass artillery. So, uh... All right. Anyway, back to the back to the article. History imposed order. This extraordinary process uh, pervades Roman literature and art, and recognition of this historiographical habit can clarify many of the questions they pose. For example, why do monuments like the Ara Pacia have scenes commemorating historical events combined with scenes from myth or legend? Why did Roman artists freely combine seemingly contrasting stylistic and iconography? I iconographic traditions on the same monument. The cyclical conception of time. To comprehend the Roman obsession with history and understand its unusual manifestation in the visual arts, it is first necessary to appreciate a conception of history prevalent in classical antiqui antiquity. Wait a minute. What are we short on? Still the support equipment. Do one more in there, but then that's it. Three factories is more And we're going to get... Um, no need to like do anything to anybody because we're going to constantly... We're constantly increasing the popularity of Kami. So, sure, we can do some stuff in the Decisions tab to make it happen faster, but I don't see the need. Got eight planes left in the air. <laughs> okay. Just as there is no single geometry that must be applied to space, there is no unique intuition of time that is common to all mankind. Minute. Here, 92 days on that. Excellent. Hey guys, what do you think? Nukes? Huh? Get, get, get wild and crazy? We're gonna do assault. You know, no, no, not assault. I should have. Ah, well, I was gonna say I should wait until I've had a little bit more army experience. Let's check the casualties, by the way. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. What, 20 to 1 now? And uh, how much population do they have still? They went up to extensive conscription, so we're still going to be here a while. Okay. Um, various civilizations have assigned different different degrees of significance, both to the temporal mode of existence and to the importance of its perspective. In classical historical thought, though, the dominant concern was with the process of change. Research into... Should I do total mobilization? Wild. No, no, no. Let's instead 
do artillery. Yeah. And uh, we're almost done with master artillery. Okay, now we get the Urkel code. So you guys can read what that says there too. So, uh, research into the distant past forced Greek and Roman historians to consider the relative antiquity of foreign cultures, a crucial factor for the emergence of ideas about the rise and fall of empires. Beginning with the investigations of the Greeks, historians wrote of past glories for which there were real physical evidence. Imperial rise and fall were interpreted as a manifestation of recurring cyclical configurations such as growth and decay. Mutable fortune or regular heavenly influence upon human affairs. In such cyclical, cyclical conceptions of time, particular deeds and events lose their singularity and fall into recognizable configurations that appear again and again. The order of the past therefore illuminates not only the present, but future occurrences as well. You're probably wondering when the hell we're getting to the uh, monument, huh? <laughs> uh, I think now we... It's actually... Several times in the course of their own history, moreover, the Romans underwent the terror of an imminent end to their city. It was commonly believed that the longevity of Rome had been determined at the very moment of its foundation by Romulus, and at every historical crisis, even sophisticated Romans returned obsessively to two uh, crepuscular myths. Stuttering all over the place today. Now we need infantry. A whole lot of them. I need to build some civilian factories too. So this last military one is done. Um, first, they feared that the life of the city was ending. Its duration limited to a certain number of years. The mystic number revealed by the 12 eagles seen by Romulus. Quote, And as the sun, its golden orb upraised, 12 sacred birds flew down from heaven and betook themselves to stations set apart for goodly signs. Then Romulus perceived that he had gained a throne whose source and prop was at Augury. That's from Aeneas's Annals, Fragments 96 through 100. Got that real quick. Secondly, many Romans believed the conclusion of the, quote, great year, unquote, which marked the end of a cosmic cycle would put an end to all history. And hence, to that of Rome, through a universal cat catastrophe, the cycle would end with fiery cataclysm, or ekpyrosis. Briefly, the great year is the period... Oh, this is a side note, but it's kind of important. Briefly, the great year is the period required for the sun, moon, and planets to return to the positions they had originally held at a given time in the past. For, Heracl for Heraclitus, the great year signified the period of the world from its formation to its destruction and rebirth. Hey, According to his teachings, the universe sprang from fire and will end in fire, a periodical ekpyrosis putting an end to the universe in order to purify it. The idea was probably transmitted from Iran, where it originated. Now, in Rome, Stoic philosophers conflate myths about the mystic number and the great year. They taught that when the heavenly bodies returned at fixed intervals of time to the positions they held at the beginning of the world, there would be a complete destruction of the universe, followed by a restoration of everything just as it had been before, when the entire cycle would begin again. Sec. Wait, oops. Wrong one. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. By the way, is she ready for an upgrade yet? Yes, she is. That's our fast little learner. Now, adaptable. She's both a ranger and a hill fighter. Look at all that. Okay. Yet down to a very late period, Roman history itself revealed the baselessness of these fears, and slowly a hope took hold that the transition from one age to another could be affected without universal destruction. 120 years after the traditional founding of Rome, it became apparent that the 12 eagles seen by Romulus did not signify 120 years of historical life for the city. After the passage of 365 years, Romans realized that there was no question of a great year composed of 12 month, 12 month days. Rather, they supposed that Rome had been granted another kind of great year, one in which each century in the life of the city equaled a month. I really hope you guys can't hear that fucking leaf blower out there. Why is he here? It's not Thursday when I'm recording this. He always comes on Thursdays. Okay, 
Similarly, in the middle of the first century BC, the Etruscan soothsayer uh, Vettius declared that the twelve eagles meant that Rome would last for twelve saecula, or periods of a hundred years. Uh, but such hopes were always mingled with anxiety. Each time historical events approached a catastrophic rhythm, the Romans again believed that the great year was on the point of ending and that Rome was on the eve of her fall. Following the Gaelic invasions in the 4th century BC, many Romans feared their capital would be moved to VA and during the later wars with Anthony and Cleopatra to Alexandria. Okay, what's next? We need... Assembly line production. You know, I think we have enough to of a uh, bonus. Look at that, she's now a skilled staffer. Let's get those queued up. And we're gonna convert all of these over. And she's ready to get a new trade again. Or not. She's she's level seven now though. Look at her go. Guys, he isn't uh faster. But field field marshals are always a bit slower. Okay, so we got these six queued up here. Very good. Now, how many um is there only the one mountain? Oh yeah, because I lost the other. So, you know what? Let's get one up also I'll move them all in later okay what else do we want to do here uh, we can pardon the commanders there's obviously no need for that at all uh, let's do war bonds does that put me to zero no nope. kind of hoped it would but that's just the way it is and holy shit are you kidding me with that I swear the dude's paid by the hour I swear Okay, now I lost my place. Where was I? Gaelic invasions, moving to Alexandria. What is. Go wow, Wingbardi and. Did I read that right? No, it's Wingbardi and Griffinstone. This war is happening kind of early. I'm so ready for Griffinstone to get a tree. I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out. Uh, we're going to now. Yeah, just keep putting it in infantry equipment for a little bit. Let's build uh, just maybe one or two civilian factories. Well, after some infrastructure down here. Plus, that'll give us more oil. Maybe people will trade with us for it. Fall of Griffinstone. Yep, pretty standard stuff. Um, how are we doing? Uh-oh, uh-oh. A little bit heavy on the uh, infrastructure up here. Let's make it maybe do this first. Let's check the casualties. 887. I think they're just giving up now. They're not going to be attacking me anymore. They, uh, they realize they have effed up. On the other hand... I'd have to kill as much as they have again all over before they run out of uh, 20 power. See, now they're not trying me at all because I've got so many divisions here. Can I do this without them scrambling everywhere? One step at a time, huh? Look at all these veterans. Beautiful, man. Oh, I forgot to train up some of those divisions, the ones I had in reserve. You know what? That's a perfect reason, though, for me to check this out. Check this out. We're gonna, we're gonna pull these back, and then maybe with less divisions on the front, they'll uh, be more eager to attack again. Plus, it should fix up uh, my. Yep, there it is. There it is. That's all it took. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. So I gotta pull these guys back. Here's what I'm gonna do then. I'm going to. Uh, we're gonna take these six and put them to the side, and let's get them training. Actually, let's put them in the south so that they don't uh, hurt the infrastructure situation anymore, or Christian situation. Okay, um, finally time for our new research slot. More stuff here as well. Hmm. Industry. Great. All right, well, today's episode is nearly over, and uh, yeah, they're they're coming in hot now. I can just up my zivs, huh? I wonder what would happen if I tried to assault. No, let's let's keep waiting. Let's keep waiting. I want to get it to where they're just so effed up that I could just run all the way to Missilopolis when the time comes. I'll just keep building up an army in the rear in the meantime. It's no problem with. That. Send them out early. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, now, where was I? Something about religion, Alexandria. 
yeah, let me at least finish this sentence, uh, this this paragraph real quick. Let's I, let's, let's I do this, and also better infantry equipment time. Oh yeah. So, uh, when Caesar crossed the Rubicon, the polymath Nigidius Figulus foresaw the beginning of a cosmic and historic drama that threatened the destruction of Rome, yet he did not believe that cataclysm was inevitable and hoped instead that a renewal was possible. Alright, so that was the end of the sentence. So, uh, you know, things are going good. Obviously, they're going very, very good. The changelings are about to cross the million casualty threshold. Um, and as you can see, they are in no way heading toward uh, a war with Equestria. Equestria is not going to come help me. I'm going to solve this problem all on my own. Uh, but things are, things, again, things are going pretty good. In fact, how many more divisions can I, not too many, but I can get a few uh, more divisions kind of queued up in the back. A little more anti-tank going since that's what we're short on. And of course the anti-tank is supremely important for those tank divisions of theirs all those panzers we'll have to worry about uh, but you know, eventually we'll have a couple of uh, armies ready to go and uh, maybe then we can think about starting to push forward let's decide which one to want. and again none of these these are not 20 widths not even 15 and i do wonder uh like let's, let's pick one of these at random how many of their guns are changing ones by now we have some of their artillery. Look at that. A fair amount, a fair amount of their guns are changeling ones now. Which is uh, humorous to me. Besides that, I'm not sure if there's anything worth grabbing anymore. So I want to work on my air force. So I'll really just be dancing on them. Yeah, why not? Let's grab that. Let's grab that and let's grab uh, construction. Then that's it for today. So I am Conquering History Games. Thank you for joining me. And in the next episode, I think uh, I think in the next episode we're going to go on the offensive here soon. Um, we're just letting them continue to run into me for a little while, but I think we're going to reach that breaking point here soon. Look at that; they're less there. So they must have stopped mobilizing, uh, or they've lost so many changelings that they uh, they can't keep up anymore, and so they're down to less than half a million. Uh, so what I might do in here at some point is jump up the conscription law so we can be actively mobilizing and then begin to push our way forward. Now, the thing that's going to happen once we start pushing our way forward is we're going we're gonna to probably have to repair a lot of stuff, but uh, we're also going to be gaining back cores, so that's going to also increase us, and uh, every basically everything's going to be awesome forever, as you can see. I'll see you then. Bye.